Lord, give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me the right words. Please, Lord, in the name of Jesus, really need you right now. Really, really need you right now. This video is to Rachel, but other people may need to see it. And I kind of only get one shot at this, so figured we ought to videotape it. About 12 years ago, Rachel and I got married. I know God told me to marry her. I know it's what he wanted. About three years ago, I wasn't satisfied at all with the hypocritical, Baptist, powerless, sad Christian walk that I had. I'd been addicted to porn while I was teaching Sunday school. Nobody there had enough discernment to see there was a problem. God helped. But I knew that there was stuff missing. I searched for more Jesus and I found more Jesus. I found the power of the Holy Spirit, the reality of the book of Acts. And my wife saw it, got healed instantly from depression she'd had for years, no withdrawals, no nothing. Saw her adopted daughter Lily, healed of all kinds of stuff, autism kind of things that she came from China with pretty much instantly. I committed everything to God and committed that I'd do whatever it took to try and turn this all around. I didn't consult Rachel before I prayed that and she really wasn't willing to go as far as I was and surrender as much as I was and I take responsibility for that as a husband I was not the head of the house I didn't we didn't pray together we didn't do we didn't I didn't wash her in the word like I'm supposed to I didn't equip her and prepare her so that when I hit high gear, I left her in the dust. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. A year ago, when the business closed down, the house was getting foreclosed on, God was basically stripping everything and showing how he would provide. But she, she wasn't, she couldn't see it, she couldn't go, couldn't, wouldn't. So she moved out, took the girls, moved into a rent-free house that the Lord had provided for our family. But she was sure didn't include me because I was here in Satan. Anyway, September of 2006, the Lord told me not to cut my beard. So this has been growing. For a year as evidence of fasting and praying and begging and pleading and the people around me will tell you I with all my heart sought the Lord did everything I could to obey him and pray that he would restore that he would make her the mighty warrior that she's supposed to be that would make her the helpmate that, that she could walk the ministry that God's calling me to do. There is a place you can get to where God says, enough's enough. When you see him through an open doorway, 
and every time you see him the door is a little more closed. There is a place where that door closes. And by the stubbornness of your own heart, you won't go. And a few weeks ago, other people started hearing from the Lord that Rachel wasn't going to go. I didn't want to receive it. I didn't want to hear it. I wasn't ready for it. And then the Lord started explaining it to me. But there's things that he wants done. And he showed me in the word. I didn't understand how, Lord, I'm sharing in your sufferings. I'm, I'm, my rebellious, headstrong bride is kind of like your rebellious, headstrong church bride. And he said all along that we're kind of walking this out together. And then, and then he says, she's not going to go. We're going to have to get you a different helpmate to do what I have for you to do. You're going to need somebody standing beside you, and Rachel's not going to do it. And I grieved, and I like, I, I'm like, Lord, you gotta show, me, you gotta show me where this is in the Word. You gotta show me how this is possible, how you would do this. Rachel separated against the Word of God. Rachel filed for divorce against the Word of God. I never had anything to do with it. I never went to court. Was never served. Never signed anything. Never agreed to anything. The Bible says for the husband not to divorce the wife, and I didn't. But she did. And in the eyes of the law, it's done. In the eyes of Rachel, it's done. She said she was going to do everything she could to scrub me out of the hearts and minds of her and the girls forever. As far as she's concerned, I'm dead. And God's going to honor that. Because he says that I'm dead. As far as she's concerned, and all contracts are void. And I don't understand. I didn't understand how he could do that. I said, Lord, you got to show me in the Word. And he shows me that Jesus was married to natural Israel, was married to the nation Israel. That she was the bride that he wanted. She was the bride that he took out of the desert and clothed her and washed her off and, and nurtured her. And all the scriptures, look it up yourself. But she was... But when Jesus came, when the bridegroom came, her lamp wasn't full. She was a religious Pharisee. The, the, the temple synagogue worship and law and, and brood of vipers that wouldn't listen, wouldn't recognize their king, wouldn't follow their bridegroom, wouldn't come to the marriage supper. And the only way, but he was promised, he was betrothed to her. And the only way... Because God hates divorce, the only way was to kill somebody. The only way to avoid that marriage was for somebody to die. And Jesus, in his love, said, Father, don't kill her. I'll die. And he went to the cross and he died. And among all the other reasons for going to the cross, one of them was to cancel that contract and void that marriage. And he died... The old covenant was broken, and when he rose out of that tomb, the new bride was there to meet him. The symbolic representation of that new bride, the Mary Magdalene, the, the, the spirit-filled, delivered from demons, outside of the temple, hated by man, desperately in love with Jesus, new bride was there to meet him. And he ended the old marriage... And the Father gave him a new bride that would listen, that would obey, that would be led by the Holy Spirit, that would keep their lamp full. And after days of fasting and praying and without food or water and just... He explained it all to me and showed me how he could trade one bride in for another and did. And he said, it's time for the beard to go. 
she missed it. I'm going to use her for other things. I've got a plan. But she's not going to go. In the book of Ezra, when Ezra realizes that they've just come back from captivity, and they were in captivity because they weren't obeying God, and they intermarried with the nations and they weren't supposed to, and they were unequally yoked, and God told them not to. And Ezra realizes that even the priests have taken foreign wives and they're not supposed to. He grieves and he tears his clothes and he pulls out his beard. And, and they, they see the grief and they agree. There's something wrong here. We need to fix it. And they, and they put away the foreign wives. And they remarry God. And they commit to Him. And the Lord said to make this video to grieve in public for what could have been, what should have been. God wanted it to be. I'm sorry for my part in it. I'm sorry to God for having greed him. <laughs> I'm sorry to Rachel for not being the husband I was supposed to be. I'm sorry that we forced God to back up plans. <laughs> but I don't want to grieve him and I want his temple to be pure. And I want His will to be done. And I believe Him. And He said, take off your ring. And He said, He said, we're done with the beard now. It's time to get serious. It's time to move on. 
It's time to get about our father's business. Somebody's got to grieve and mourn. Somebody's got to repent. Somebody's got to show up. We're not going to fix the church with happy and fluffy. We're not going to fix the church with singing and dancing. Repent. Weep and mourn before the altar. And grieve for what's happened. Grieve for what's come. Grieve for what the mess we've made. It's going to hurt to fix it. It's going to hurt to turn this around. All kinds of things are going to have to look different. But it's got to happen. Whatever it is, whatever it is, rip it out, pluck it out, tear it out, be done with it, however much it hurts. Reach in and grab it, and tear it out. He's not kidding around. We're running out of time. I love Rachel. But what God is doing, what God has shown me, He says nothing that you give up will He fail to replace a hundred times over. And he's showing me something so beyond anything I can think or imagine. And I'm telling you, whatever it costs, however much it hurts, whatever he rips out of your grip, whatever he tears off of you, it's nothing compared to what he's going to replace it with. Don't hold on. past when he says, it's time. Put it all on the altar. <laughs>